For your book, Journey into America, you and your team of young researchers uh, traveled for a year through more than 75 different uh, cities across the United States, from larger Muslim communities like in New York, or uh, a place I know a little bit about is Dearborn, Michigan, uh, to smaller communities uh, uh, um, from uh, Cedar Lake, uh, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, uh, where the mother mosque in the U.S. is, uh, to uh, town in Alabama. What did you learn about Islam in America during your research? Number one, that it is not a monolith. Number two, that a lot of Americans see it as a monolith. They talk of Muslims. In fact, every community in America, uh, every community in the Muslim world is present in America. So you'll have Turks and Pakistanis and Egyptians, the, the whole world is here in terms of the Muslim community. That's one lesson. Second big lesson was that America is, has a long way to go to really understand Islam because it's so controversial here. It's associated as the religion which attacked us on 9-11. So, you know, there's a great uh, label attached to it, terrorism or the dangers of being terrorist. So the, all these tropes, the neighbor next door, the terrorist next door, these all still circulating. They haven't disappeared. Uh, therefore, it's imperative for those who journey to bring peace between com communities to continue their journeys. And the biggest thing I learned was that Americans have a great desire to really understand other peoples, other cultures. Uh, and we found hospitality and warmth throughout the United States. Wherever we went, very often we'd be welcomed somewhere in the Midwest uh, in a synagogue or in a church. And the rabbi would say, we don't see Muslims here. You're the first Muslims you're meeting. So that told me that more Muslims have to be more active in reaching out to the majority community. And the majority community equally to re reach out to the minority communities. Uh, there, is, there is the great need to, and I think we have to help all these communities to reach out to each other. I also discovered that there's such rich traditions which lie juxtaposed in America. I think we can all share in that and we can all enrich ourselves by knowing more about those communities. You, know, you talked about diversity. I mean, even in a small city like ours, uh, you know, 250,000 people. So a small city, we saw last night, right? That we have a, 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 a more of an African-centric Muslim mosque, one based in the subcontinent, based, founded by Pakistanis. A Bosnian mosque, a Burmese mosque, yes, where you are. met the imams, uh, even in a little city like ours. I mean, great diversity. And a great compliment to this uh, great city of Fort Wayne because you actually have so many mosques here. Welcome. They all we discussed last night on the table. They said we are very happy here. We love being here. You know, we are part of the social fabric now. They're all contributing. Some are doctors, some are professors. Uh, you had four imams there, which is, which is quite a gathering because, you know, the famous sayings about the priests that if you have four imams or any other priest from any other faith, you'll have six opinions about <laughs> that faith and they'll be constantly arguing. They're almost as bad as the economists. But you see from that event last night, where you had over 30 guests, very distinguished guests from this town, how civilized the conversation was. I was really very impressed and moved that you actually arranged sheets on the ground for Muslims to say their prayer. And Muslims felt welcome as part of this community. They didn't feel threatened. They didn't feel some, like they're odd, like they're animals in a zoo being watched by spectators. They felt that we are being honored in our religion. And that guarantees good citizens, that guarantees integration, and that is what America is all about if you read the Founding Fathers and their version of pluralism. 